Hi, I'm Linda. I have the Shop Seaporium in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. So this is a project that I had started and um, we're at a point where I can kind of pull my, my, my ideas together. We've gotten a couple things done to this table. Here's the piece. It's a super cute little harp table, but I have the decoupage down there. I already added some stamps on the apron and I ended up taking off the existing molding and put up an IOD molding. And we'll talk about how to do the molding, how to do the stamps. On our table, I used the Trimmings 3 mold, okay? Because the edge of this table had a little bit of a, of a trim on the bottom, but it was broken in so many places and I tried to make a molding out of hot glue and it just wasn't working because the bottom edge was was open and it's not something I've done a lot before. So I um, just took off, I took a scraper and got underneath the molding and popped off the existing molding. I actually saved it. And then I used this molding from Trimmings 3, that very bottom one that doesn't go all the way across. And I used our clay and put that on. So how that works, we want to have a little cornstarch. We want to have our um, glue. We want to have our clay and some tools. Tools to have are like a putty knife, a transfer tool or credit card will work. The back of your thumb will work. And of course, the Iron Orca Designs air dry clay. It's when you're using the clay, don't do this with resin. Don't use this if you're using hot glue. I don't think you do it with polymer clay either. You're gonna dust your mold that you're using with the cornstarch. We're just gonna do one quick one just because I just wanna get, in case you don't know any of this, just something to get you started, all right? We're gonna take a little bit of the clay. We're gonna keep this folded and protected because it does what it says. It's air dry clay. It dries very well in air. And then I'm gonna take a tube because especially since it's a tubular thing we're working with and I'm just going to press that in you know this part's important because you want to have a nice impression on the other side this side you want it nice and flat so you could take the back of your thumb all right a lot of the bigger pieces I like to use a, a, a putty knife of some sort or a credit card but this is nice and small, so I, you can take your fingers. You know, when you're working with the clay and the glue and stuff, you're gonna get gluey clay fingers. So have a damp rag around to wipe off. And then we're gonna use gravity, and we're gonna let that kind of pop out. And we have a beautiful impression, and it's a little beadwork. So when we do this, since I'm working with like a, a wood or wood-like material, anyways, I'm not sure what it is, I'm going to use a wood glue. This is tight bond, quick and thick, and you just put enough down. You want to put enough that it kind of oozes out to the sides to kind of make its own caulking at the end. And this has got a groove on it. Three sides have some of this detail. Three and one side does not. So this was my way of making everything kind of copacetic. So now that I've got this glued down, you want to carefully press down, but you also want to press it in on itself. And then you could take like a little um, X-Acto knife or whatever, a box cutter, right? And then make like a frame cut or you can, I'm just gonna bend it around the corner. All right, so that's that. You know, you wanna keep pressing down, press this back in on itself and you will have very little to no cracking, okay? Even with the air dry clays. Especially with this Iron Orchid Design air dry clay, I have the best luck with this method. Press down, but also press in on itself. This is a whole other project, but I wanted to show you how I put the decoupage and the clay on. All right, so I have some glue down here that I stamped on. This is the Reverie stamp, by the way. It's, it's in pieces because um, I cut the one angel to use as a stamp, all right? 
when you get your new stamps, and if you haven't checked out these new stamps from Iron Orchid, like this is basically their first gen version of Fifery. It's called, it's now called Reverie, which I keep calling Fifery. <laughs> But Reverie is like a deconstructed version of that first stamp that everybody loves. And these angels are now, they face each other. So if you have door panels, they can look at each other instead of both looking off to one direction or the other direction. They can look at each other. I saved this one because I want to show you when you get your stamps, can you see the difference? Not the backing, but the actual stamp. I sanded the top, but I did not do the bottom yet. And it's as shiny as the backing is, but the top is duller. And that's because I took a sandpaper and literally, I know you're gonna kind of freak out if you're not used to this, but anyone who has tried to stamp that didn't do this, you, you, would, you see the difference. If you're not having luck stamping, it's probably because your, your stamp needed to be conditioned better. All right, sand it up and down, side to side, do it all, and then you wipe it. That's only when you first get your stamp. Now these stamps do peel off, and you can make an arrangement by using, you know, we can, uh, most retailers have this thin mount, all right? It's got like a grid, I don't know if you can see that. Um, this grid line has your centers, it has ovals. All the stamps do come with this top sheet, so save those because you can peel these off and make an arrangement all right, on your piece, put this right on top of all your flowers and your leaves or whatever it is you're doing, and then you collect them and you have one big stamp, okay? And then what I did with this is I cut the angel. All right, so literally just cut around the backing. I, I didn't do this ahead of time because I want you to see like, you don't cut the stamp out, you cut it with the backing. You know, most people that are doing like scrapbook stamping or whatever, they're putting their stamps on something, right? Like an acrylic block or whatever. I don't come from that background. I can tell you that I use, I did buy an acrylic block, but I've never really used it because I find whatever I'm working on, it's never that flat. And so I'll have missing parts whenever I use those acrylic blocks. I love these little thin acetate, whatever they are, sheets that come with the stamps or the thin mount, the same material. I just also try to not leave pointy things because when you reach in your bag to get these, <laughs> you know. So that's what you do with your stamps. We're not going to use that one right now because I want to do a couple things first. I have it stamped with a glue here for foil. So like you could use it for silver leaf, for gold leaf, for silver foil, gold foil, whatever. And so that has already been stamped here. And we're going to get to the other side before the end of the video. But let me show you like what I did to get this adornment on here, okay? Let's cut another one. We could do that. So I'm just gonna try to ink up this area here. That should work. Or let's see our adornment. What did I do with adornment? So this is adornment, and this is what we used along here. And then the one I cut out is this piece. All right, let's see if I can show you that. All right. These are all pretty much, <laughs> We're just, I think we're gonna do her. Get another brayer, and I'm just looking at my inks here. Stone gray, because that's what I used here. So for the stone gray, because I don't wanna do this braying on my stamp, um, uh, uh, on my piece, okay? That would be no bueno. Now I could take just the stamp pad and lightly tap her right where I want. But the stamps to me, I mean, the pads, they have, there's a, a cushion, right? So, you know, it's easy to, in my opinion, to get, you know, back into areas that you don't want. If you have a brayer, these um, Iron Orchid Design brayers are awesome. You could take a little pool of the ink, all right? They come in bottles. We have eight colors. This just happens to be the turmeric. I just first one I grabbed. And you could pull it into like a plate and then 
like a little, like a, you know, a good sized drop, and then you would work it like it's paint, right? That you're painting your walls in your roller. And then I'm just using my ink pad, because it's already got the ink in it, right? You kind of want this to be even. So if you're going for a nice vivid impression, um, make sure you have a, a fresh ink pad and that everything is being put on equally. I'm just going to wipe off some of this stuff that I didn't want to be part of this. Okay, wish me luck. <laughs> Let's try and center her, kind of make her straight as possible. I'm looking at her wings. And once it's down, you don't want it to move. If I make a little mistake, you get a, like a rubbing alcohol and you wipe it off right away once I pull this off. I did not seal this paint. The decoupage is sealed because I want to put a transfer on it. Oh, you guys. I got a little bit of a fate where it kind of went over in some spots. And if I did it right away, this really does wipe off. This is lightning, but I kind of waited too long to get this out. I should have had it ready. So what I can do is get these lightened and then I'll take like a watered down version of my base coat and just touch that up. All right, so that's how we do the stamp. And it's the same stamp that I used up here. So I thought I could use a little pop of color and put some of these little flowers from Elysium on there. These are so pretty. And it has like some font back here, like a little bit of newspaper. So you get kind of like a mixed media look without even having to do that. All right, so here is May's Roses. And I'm thinking there's a little antiqueness here, but I'm wondering, can't I put maybe one and color it in with a really soft pink color, a little bit here, a little bit there? I'm gonna try it. All right, so like I said, how we did the stamp on the side of this piece is how I did this, but I did it with the glue and it was a little watered down. I put the glue on and I took a little spray of water, all right? And then I took my brayer through there because the glue is really thick and the water just brings it to a thinner level. Even like when you're painting, when you're using paint in your stamps, it's a good idea, especially a lot of these mineral paints, right? They're so, they're, they're pretty thick. It's so you wanna get it to a consistency, you can get it to like an ink consistency without messing with the, you know, the properties of your paint. So anyways, when you're using a silver leaf or a foil or whatever, you use the glue Get it to a little bit thinner consistency and again try to do it evenly but the problem is you can't see <laughs> you can't see your progress because it's all clear so we're going to find out how well this worked right now i'm brave i didn't bring a brush with me so we're just going to take this it goes all the way over to here let's see what i do have for a brush i got a little toothbrush that should work all right, get it, just rub it right down. And then don't worry, if you missed a spot, you can put the foil back over it. Wherever there's a glue, wherever the glue is, the foil will still stick there. And then it just fills in. Let's see. Oh my gosh. See, like we already used enough of this, right? But we can just keep working with these areas and keep moving the foil, keep using it, even if it's silver leaf, gold leaf, more here. And you know when you've got glue because it's still sticky. All right, and you just kind of keep moving it around because we, we don't want to waste. But the glue does have to set up a little bit, which is why I already had this done before the video. And it depends on how thick it is. You just want it to get the, the glue to dry so it gets tacky. Okay, I think that feels pretty good. Can you see her? Oh, there she is. Look at her. It's gonna be one of those things that's hard to um, photograph, <laughs> but in person, which I hear all the time when people come see the stuff here, it's like, oh, it's so much better in person. It's just really hard to get the, the photographs. This will get top coated once I feel like it's all done. 
If you have spots that have glue, let's say like you touch down and there's like a glue spot over here and you didn't want that, put a little cornstarch and rub. All right, that'll take care of your glue. I've sealed this a couple times, so we should be good. There's four pages that create a big wreath. And Maze is from the first gen products of Iron Orchid Design. Um, that was kind of a vintagey seed package kind of a thing. I'm just gonna take like little bits here and there and add to what we already have. So keep the white paper behind as much as you can. All right. This is gonna keep your transfer um, as clean as possible. Now I'm gonna have to do a kind of a fine cut. You can totally cut these. And I know this is not C related, but come on. Now you could do this with like a different background and make it more like for a cottage. Like you could do like that vintage, you know, um, blues that, that give it the real vintage vibe. So now that I'm not trimming around anything, I can just cut that, tear that. All right, actually I'm gonna cut between these two too. I think there and there. And then we can put another rose over here. So this one will go first and we know where it's going. I'm just gonna try to carefully, see how I did that? Rocket science. Do an initial rub. Okay, it's to seal or not to seal. Let me, before I move on. Some paints work better when with the transfers if you seal them first, okay? And if you're not sure, and if you just wanna move along and you don't wanna wait, my suggestion is whenever in doubt, seal. And what do you seal with? Okay, you could put a flat down. Don't put a wax down because wax is always your last step. You could put any top coat down, but word to the wise. Transfers love glass. They stick to it, they love it. Like once it sits down, it doesn't want to remove. Like you have to know where it's going because once it touches it, it doesn't want to come off. So the closer you can get to that glassy like surface, the more they're going to love it. I don't like a shiny surface, but what I tend to do is kind of compromise. I go to satin and get a couple good coats. And then once it's well dried and it's clean, you can rub this on. You do an initial rub and everyone's gonna be different and depending what top coat you use, if it's a flat, you might work it a little bit harder, okay? I found, you know, the products you use can also affect it. Um, so a lot of people will use products from the stores. There was one time I was using a transfer and I had a tough time because it was pulling my varnish off. The problem wasn't the transfer, it was the varnish. Again, work with your retailers. There's a little link right there. All right, so now that we have the sealed surface and I started that initial rub, what I'm trying to do is get this to come off of the backing and the best way to do it is to add a little resist. So if you can get like a little air bubble underneath, once you do that initial rub, it wants to stick to your surface, but sometimes it needs a little help to let go of the backing. So if you're hearing that plasticky sound, that's a good thing. And see how it got lighter and this is deeper? Because this is already off of the backing. This is a time where if I had a piece left on my backing sheet, just set it right back down because nothing has moved and rub it down. If it did move, like, oh, oh, geez, look, I have a piece of the leaf there, right? You could say, all right, uh, right there. Boom, 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 rub it back in. No one's the wiser. Sometimes you could take these little leftover pieces and kind of fill in an area that got missed. Put a butterfly over it or something, a stamp, right? Once it's all down, take like the backing or the, be the, the protective sheet, whatever and burnish it all down. Just make sure it has really good contact with your surface, all right? I have a little wrinkle here, but it's not because of the transfer, it's because of my decoupage. Let's see what happens if we can add a little color. We have a palette. Let's mix a pink. So we're gonna take a dab of pink and we're gonna take a little bit of white, actually probably more white than the pink. So we need a little green for the leaf. Clean your jars, everybody, clean your jars. Word to the wise. And I'm pretty good at it. It's just, it still always seems to get on the necks, doesn't it? Let me find a gray. Okay, something to dull down our pink. 
Okay, a little bit of water because we want that to be our, you know, our flow. We'll take a dab of pink, quite a bit of white, and something to kind of tone it down. Oh, that was a little bit much. Right? It's a nice soft, soft, soft pink. I want to start wetter and just see how this goes. With the black and white transfers, this is what we did. Just a little bit of color. We can water it down a little bit. Once this dries, we'll give it a little, you know, top coat. But you want it to be watery because, see, like here we got some details. I don't want to lose them all. But it's really light. You could do this darker if you want. You could do it more of a, you know, the peonies colors or whatever. I'm, I'm looking for just something to stand off a little bit. Maybe add a little more in some areas as we get in. Just sort of keep working it out from there, maybe. So, that's the idea. I'm going to keep coloring because this is fun as heck. And I'll add my other transfers. That is that, you guys. I think I got it all done. Thank you, thank you, thank you for partaking in tonight's fun. Stay sassy until I see you next time. Bye-bye.